All right, today we're gonna to talk about exponents with integer bases. Now, just a reminder, when I say an integer base, that means it could be positive or negative, but we're not gonna include fractions, decimals, anything like that. So it's, it's um, basically either like a whole number or it's gonna be um, the opposite of that as a negative. All right, so we're gonna have things like this where we're changing positive and negative, see how that changes or not. Turns out the placement of uh, parentheses sometimes is really critical. So we're gonna talk carefully about this. And then finally, we're gonna talk about what happens when you got an exponent of zero, what happens when you have an exponent of one. All right, so let's just get our definition straight before we go any further. Now, Eric, if I'm talking about putting this all together, now, when you have a base with an exponent, all together, we're gonna to call this, when you put those together, we're gonna to call that a power. Right, that's a power. Okay. Now, if on the other hand, let's let's break it apart a little bit. If we just think about the number down below and the number above, okay. Now the number above, just to be clear here, right? This is my exponent. And my number uh, down below would be my base. Okay, just so we're using our vocabulary, right? Put it all together, we cut all the power. The number at the bottom is the base. The number at the top is the exponent. Again, the exponent tells us how many times we're multiplying it. The base tells us what we're multiplying. All right, so let's just do a couple super quick. I'm sh hopefully this is gonna be a lot of review, but just so we have a place to start, right? Two to the third, I just mean two times two times two. So two to the third would equal eight. All right, we got the first one done, yay. Um, all right, let's um, let's now look at the next one. Okay, I had negative two to the third. Well, you know what's kind of funny? Um, if I've got negative two to the third, and notice the parentheses here. The parentheses, because of those parentheses, that means what's in the parentheses is gonna be used over and over again, okay? So this is like saying, negative two times negative two times negative two okay now a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive right so this negative times that negative so they cancel each other i got positives but look i still have another negative here so what's kind of funny is um you know yeah that all happens and i but i just get negative and then it's just two times two times two so i've got a negative eight all right so negative two to the third actually equals negative eight. Um, now, let's talk about what happens with something else. Then we're gonna come back to this in a second, all right? Let's actually look at these examples in the middle here, the negative three squared and the negative three squared. <laughs> let's, I'll try and be careful how I say it because it actually makes a difference. Uh, so I've got negative three squared what that equals, but then we're also going to have negative 3 squared, right? So again, this is negative 3 squared, this is negative 3 squared. Okay, now let me see, show you what I mean by that. Now, when I expand this, now what I really have to think about, this is 3 squared, the opposite of it. So the opposite of whatever 3 squared is. So first, let's think about what 3 squared is. 3 squared is 3 times three, a negative in front, is like that. So hence, I've got negative three times three, which is nine, so this is negative nine, okay? Now, let's not get that confused with what we're about gonna do over here. Because over here, I'm seeing whatever, the whole parentheses gets multiplied twice. So this is negative three times negative three. Well negative times a negative is a positive, right? So this is actually nine, okay? Important that we see the difference here, right? Negative three squared equals negative nine, because again, the minuses, you gotta think about what's up there first, but when the parentheses are there, then it becomes a positive, okay? Sometimes it gets a little controversial, but this is the right way it works, okay? So be careful about that. All right, now, before we move on to the zeros and the ones, let's just think about what happens if we're going the other direction. 
Now, sometimes we're going to have problems where we're given the base and we actually have to find the exponent. Okay. Now, let's say I had a problem something like this. Okay. Now, 5 to some power of n is equal to 625. Now, there's ways we can do this with calculators, you know, with inverse uh, and logs and all this fancy stuff, right? But what we're, there's a really kind of sometimes the easiest thing is just, you know, why don't I just start multiplying fives until I find it and just see if it's even going to work. Now, I'm going to, you know, we've done this probably a couple times before, but again, it's, it's handy, especially when we're doing exponents to look for the this shortcut. If I want to multiply five by itself over and over again, I can do five times times notice I hit it twice and then I'm gonna hit equals over and over again so then I'm gonna have equals so that's five squared cubed five to the fourth okay hey that was pretty cool right so 625 so it's five to the fourth equals 625 now um, just might want to double check it if in doubt let's just multiply it out so 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Yep, that was 4. Okay, it works. So hence, n equals 4. So if, so again, you just kind of have to experiment a little bit till you to find the one. All right, now we get to talk about exponents that are 0 and exponents that are 1. Now, the, uh, the exponents that are 1, let's just do that one first, okay? Well, 7 to the first is just equal to 7. Okay, I know it might be kind of silly, but we're going to have to remember that if there's no exponent written, that basically means it's to the first power. Okay, now let's see what 7 to the 0 is. It turns out 7 to the 0, and we're going to talk in a later lesson why this is true, but anything to the 0 power is going to be 1, right? 7 to the 0 is 1. Um, that also works for just any kind of a crazy number here, right? So I might have... 2.7462 to the zero power. That equals one. It works for negative numbers too, right? So if I have um, negative 37 to the zero power, that also equals one. So negative power to the to the negative to the zero power also is going to give me a one. Uh, the only one that doesn't work so well, and so we're just not going to be able to do this one is zero to the zero it turns out that's considered undefined right if you put that one in your calculator it's not going to be happy okay so uh, again that one just doesn't work but just about every other thing you can think of uh certainly for integers positive and negative and even with decimals and fractions we can talk about those later the only integer that doesn't work is zero to the zero and that's for a few reasons just isn't going to turn out well uh, now, finally, let's just talk about this. What happens if you have a 10 as your base? Now, when we have a 10 as our base, that actually is pretty cool because you just count up the number of zeros. So if I have 10 to the third, okay? Let's say I've got 10 to the third. 10 to the third equals 10 times 10 times 10, right? Well, 10 times 10 is 100, another 10 gives me 1,000. So this is one, two, three. Now, what's kind of cool is the exponent is also the number of zeros, right? 10 to the third is got three zeros. So hey, I bet we could figure out the next one, right? That means 10 to the fourth equals, well, another 10, right? 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, right? So this is gonna be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Well, again, it turns out that's just going to be 10,000. Okay. So again, a real handy thing to keep in mind. The number up here tells you how many zeros. Right. So we can we can do some really big ones, and we just know right off the bat we don't have to show much work for this. Right. 10 to the seventh. Well, I'm going to have a whole bunch of zeros here. I'm going to have seven zeros. Okay. So I'm going to have 10. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right. Well, that's it for our exponents. And um, with that, 
we'll just say we'll see you next time and uh, next time we're going to be working with some decimals and some fractions for the bases and uh, those get a little more interesting too. All right, see you next time.